Hello and welcome back to Twill.tv where today we're going to be taking a look at the Canary All-in-One Home Security Device. Just a quick disclaimer, I did receive this product for free for a review and I am being compensated for the review but that in no way affects my thoughts or opinions on the product. So let's go ahead and take a look at the box itself. When you're looking at the specs on the box you'll see it has a 1080p camera, the lens on the front does 147 degree wide angle, it also does night vision and motion detection, it has a built in microphone, a 90 dB siren, it does temperature, humidity and air quality sensing as well as having an ambient light so that you can tell what mode it's in. It does 802.11bgn wireless as well as wired ethernet and it comes in three different colors black, white, and silver. And once you open the box you'll immediately find the manuals and documentation that's included. You'll find a couple of stickers that say that your property is now protected by Canary and that there's active video monitoring going on. You'll also find a long flat micro USB cable which is about six feet long. There's a three and a half millimeter bright yellow security cable which is used for the initial programming of the device. There's the USB power adapter which you plug into the wall. It rates in at five volts at two amps. And then you have the Canary itself. When you look at the front of the device, you'll see that 147 degree lens, the 1080p camera. You'll also see the microphone sitting just below that. You turn it around to the back, you'll find the ethernet port, the three and a half millimeter port for security programming, as well as the micro USB power port. And before we go any further, you might want to open up the manual. On the front page of the manual, it tells you that you can go download the app for this device from the Google Play Store or from the Apple App Store, or you can go to canary.is slash app and get the app from there. And once you've installed the app to your device, the first thing it's going to have you do is set up an account. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut out the grand majority of the video from this simply because it does show a lot of personal information. But once you've got all that accomplished, it asks you if you want to go ahead and set up your Canary now. Of course you want to do that. And that that's actually where it shows the location. I'm not going to show you that obviously. Then it asks you to power on the canary. So what you end up doing is plugging the micro USB cable into the back of it. You're supposed to use the included wall wart that they supplied, but I've used it with other power adapters and haven't had any real issues with it. After you've powered it up, it asks you to set up Wi-Fi or Ethernet for the device. You get to pick what you want and provide all the information about that. Then it asks you to plug in your yellow secure cable for setup. And then it has you turn your phone's audio up all the way and it sends out audio signals from your phone to the device for security pairing purposes. While it's doing the connection there, it gives you a quick walkthrough of some of the app settings, some of the things you'll be able to expect from the Canary. And then when it's done, it asks you to unplug the yellow cable. It does a quick firmware update online. And when that's done, it takes probably five minutes. There's another quick app walkthrough just showing you all the things that you can do using the app and you're ready to go. So as far as the day-to-day -day usage of this device, you'll find that there are three modes available. You can set it from the lower left corner of the app screen. There is armed, wherein the app will alert you when it sees any sort of motion and it immediately starts recording when it sees motion. There's the disarmed mode, where it starts recording anytime it sees motion, but it doesn't actually send you any app alerts. Then there's the privacy mode, where the mic and camera are all disabled. There's really no interaction. That's what privacy means, obviously. Now you can switch between these modes manually in the lower left corner of the app, or you can have it automatically arm whenever you leave the geofence that it sets up. So basically when you leave the GPS location of the device and or the Wi-Fi signal that it's connected to, if it's on a Wi-Fi network, it will know that and it will automatically arm itself appropriately. You can also within the app change the setting for when you return into the geofence as to whether you want it to disarm or go into the full privacy mode. So if you don't want it recording your family when you walk in the door, you can tell it not to. In my experience with it, geofencing itself did work very, very well. I tried it a bunch of different times, leaving the house and coming back, and every time I left the house with my device, it did register that I had left and it automatically armed the device. You do need to make sure that every person in your house that has a smart device does have this enabled though, otherwise when you're wife comes home from work, you're going to see her coming in the door and it's going to notify you that someone is breaking into your home and you don't necessarily want that. Now when you don't have the device in the privacy mode, the watch live button will appear and you can click on that to, as it says, watch the camera live. There's a record button that shows up when you're in that mode. You can click that to record whatever's going on at the time and you can hear the audio coming from the location. There's also a button to sound the siren and a button to do an emergency call just in case something's going on and you haven't been notified.
And back in the main screen of the app, just below the Watch Live button, you can see the current temperature, the humidity, and the air quality for the location of the camera. If you click on that, you can go ahead and get a graph of all of those things over time. And if you swipe up from that home screen, you can see the whole timeline of events. You can have the all events, there's just the events that happen during the armed state, or events that you've specifically bookmarked for later. In these events, you can click on any of the video events to view the video. You can sound a siren based off of what you see there. You can do the emergency call as I mentioned earlier, or there's even an option to switch to watching live if the privacy mode is not enabled. There's also the option to leave a comment on it so other members of the household can see it. You can provide more info about what's going on. You can tag it and provide more information there. And you can also download the video for watching later or for archival purposes, or even delete the whole activity if you don't want it to be saved. And then back in the main screen of the app again, if you swipe down from the main screen, you'll see the settings and location info, which I'm not going to go into that again, but it is is available if you want to go in there and change things. So now that I've been using this camera for a little while, I thought I'd go ahead and give you my thoughts on it. Some of the pros involved with it include it has IR night vision, and you can hear it come on. It actually clicks when it comes on, and there's a ring of LEDs around the lens that you can see when night vision is enabled. It's also got that 90 decibel, very, very loud siren that you can turn on. I love the geofencing. I love the fact that it can automatically arm itself whenever I leave the house. I love that it does the automatic recording in armed mode, but also in distance disarmed mode. So if you're sitting around the house with your family and there's an intruder that breaks in, you still have that video record of it. And I love that you can download the videos later, although they are only in 720p. It's a 1080p camera, but currently they do only allow downloading 720p videos, but they've mentioned that it's possible there will be an update to make higher bandwidth videos available. And finally, I absolutely love that you can have up to four of these in a household. I'm already thinking of other places that I would like to have them here in my home. Now it can't be all sunshine and roses, obviously there are a few cons to it. First up is that there's no included backup battery, so if you lose power you immediately lose all of the camera functionality. However, you could always work around this by having a USB battery pack, at least one that does two amps of output, and hopefully one that will charge over USB at the same time that it puts out power, so that would be a good workaround. Also, there's not a built-in web interface. That's not really a big deal, but I did think it was worth mentioning. Everything you do with this you're gonna have to do through the application on your device. Not a big deal for me, but it also does does not interact with any other home security systems, home automation solutions, anything like that. It's a camera, I wouldn't really expect it to, but I just thought I'd mention that as well. And kind of a big one for me is that it can only be placed on flat surfaces. It doesn't have any sort of a tripod mount or a wall mount or anything. Not really a big deal there again, but it's something that I might like to do. If I wanted to use this as a baby monitor, for example, it would be kind of nice if I could mount it up on the wall and angle it down into a crib. But again, that's not really what this is intended for. And the last thing to sort of mention is that there's no built-in scheduling. So for example, if you're going to bed and you wanted to have it automatically set to armed while you're in bed, there's not a way with the app to do that. So you'd have to manually set it to armed and then disarm it in the morning. I would like to see that and that's definitely something that could be done in a future app update. I'll probably mention that to Canary just to see if that's something they're interested in doing. So to wrap things up, my final thoughts and opinions on this thing. It's a $250 all-in-one home security system. Do I think it's really worth that price? Yes. Honestly, I had been looking at this thing on my own before I ever found out about this opportunity, and as soon as I saw the opportunity, I absolutely pounced on it. Knowing that when I leave the house that there's a camera that's going to start watching and making sure that everything's okay at home, and if it's not, it's going to send me a message immediately on my phone letting me know that something's going on. There's no better peace of mind than something like that, in my opinion. But that's going to be about all for me for today. I'll have links to where you can find more information about the Canary down in the video description, and where you can pick one up over on Amazon if you're interested. Thanks to so much to Canary for sponsoring this video and making this all possible. Remember, if you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up down below the video. I definitely appreciate it. And subscribe to receive more videos when they become available. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you again next time.